Hey guys, so the distribution we'll be taking a look at today is called the LXLE Desktop, which is released at version 14.04, which is based on Ubuntu or Lubuntu, the latest long-term support release, which is also at 14.04. So as you can see here, I've got the website up, but I've also got the uh, operating system booted or ready to boot in another window, which I'll show you momentarily. But I would like to show you the website first because there are a few things that I like right off the bat in regards to this distribution. And their website is one of them. Okay, so um, LXLE was originally conceived to um, fill in a particular uh, gap in the Lubuntu community, which was before a time when there were long-term support releases for Lubuntu, and it wanted to kind of have a long-term support release because there are a lot of benefits to having long-term support releases, releases that are released about every uh, once every two years, and they're designed to last the duration rather than Ubuntu's short-term uh, schedule, which is every six months, which is, it's a lot to ask people to upgrade their entire operating system every six months. So yeah, this certainly filled a particular gap in the market and it appears to be doing so very, very well, but we'll get onto the operating system shortly. So uh, first, let's have a look at the list of features. It's light on resources, as are pretty much all the LX DE-based distributions uh, based on Ubuntu and Lubuntu. Uses an optimized LXDE user interface, four family desktop layout paradigms, prudent full-featured apps pre-installed, latest stable versions of major software, added PPAs, extend, uh, extends available software, weather, AeroSnap quick launch, random wallpaper, panel trash access, theme consistency throughout the system, 100 gorgeous wallpapers pre-installed, numerous other tweaks and additions, 32 and 64 bit OS versions available, and it can boot and is online in less than a minute. But of course, because we'll be running this through a virtual machine, uh, times may vary. Sometimes when you install it, it takes a lot quicker than if you would say off a CD. But then again, sometimes some of the in system things take a little bit longer to load. So don't judge the time particularly harshly here, especially considering this is uh, the speed and responsiveness of a system is part of its uh, selling point on this one. So uh, virtual machines are certainly not the best place to run it. But it'll give us a good look at the visuals and some of the installed software and so forth. Okay, so one of the reasons I really like this software, uh, this website, regardless of um, uh, the actual feature list or whatever, is because it's very open about some of its philosophy. So you can go to the about, actually, let's go to the about section, because it actually outlines its philosophy right there in black and white. So, LXLE based on Ubuntu, uh, Lubuntu, which is an Ubuntu OS, um, and it just pinpoints the philosophy here and a few basic steps and what it's kind of designed for, what it prioritizes, and the kind of perspective that it has on the Linux community. And this is always useful to check out when you're looking at adopting a Linux distribution because it can give you a good idea of the direction in which this distribution wants to go. It can give you an idea of its reliability, of its stability, of its priorities as well, whether or not it might put security at the top of that priority list or stability or the latest and greatest software or whatever. And um, depending on how you want your system to run, it, it might be outlined or not in the uh, OS philosophy. And they list it on most of the OS's um, websites, but this is a particularly good one for it because it explains it not only in detail, but in also reasonably easy to understand uh, language as well. It's also, I like the privacy tab here. This is a very nice touch where it talks about some of the information that uh, they might acquire from you from visiting their website. Not many websites do this in uh, as user-friendly a way as this. It uses Pywik Analytics to monitor traffic rather than the more traditional Google Analytics used by most people. Uh, Pywik records the general geographical vicinity. It tells basically it tells you what information that they have access to, what they do with it, and um, how you can opt out of it. Again, not so many websites actually tell you what they do with your data. A lot, of, a lot of websites tell you what they don't do, but they don't you know, exactly tell you why they're collecting your data and why it's useful. But, um, but they do. So you've always got to give um, some additional points for them for that one. Uh, regardless of the operating system, these guys, to me, are approaching uh, Linux and the open source community in the right way. Okay, so we can have a look at all this, but I strongly recommend you guys to check out the website for yourself, lxle.net, which of course will be linked in the description below. Okay, so uh, let's get off this website here, uh, and we will check out the uh, operating system here. Okay, so let's boot into the live system. So this is what the uh, this is the boot menu that you'll get if you just uh, burnt it to an ISO and then. Uh, uh, then booted off that CD. If, yeah, if you burnt the ISO to a CD and then boot, booted off of it. Uh, 
And like I said, this may take a little bit longer than a minute to boot up because it is in a virtual machine. But yeah, definitely a good philosophy. Definitely, like I like their attitude. Sometimes, you know, when you just check out um, a website and you want to hear what a group of developers have to say and it, it really kind of resonates with you. And definitely it does so with this distribution. Um, it's, uh, you know, taking people's privacy and uh, details seriously um, because the information is a... Uh, it's uh, it's a, it's a it's a serious business. Okay, so as you can see here, here you've got the old familiar LXDE desktop environment, um, but with some fancy wallpaper, and of course you may notice some uh, system stats up here. Okay, so uh, you've got the weather here. You can hide or show that info, so don't worry if you uh, feel that your desktop's a little cluttered with that. But it's I like having that there. I kind of uh, wish more distributions would include something along those lines right off the uh, taskbar, just so that you, you know, might know whether or not it's memory or processor or whatever that's uh, making your computer run slow. But uh, there we go. Okay, so you've got Ethernet connection. Um, you've got the volume control. Uh, oh, random wallpaper. That's pretty neat. I kind of like that, you know. That's a bit of a gadget, bit of a gimmick, but um, but I kind of like it. Show desktop, file manager. Of course, you... Oh, that's the uh, file manager menu. So there you go. Of course, this being a live CD, there's not really much of a tree of... Uh, that's good. I like that. What else we got? So, okay, as you can see here... It comes bundled with a lot more software than uh, Lubuntu and most of the Ubuntu distributions, actually. And also comes bundled with LibreOffice, which you don't see with many LXDE-based uh, um, distributions, uh, mainly because um, they try and install like a, an Office environment that uses less resources. But um, to be honest, most um, XP-turned LXLE machines are more than l likely to be able to run LibreOffice pretty flawlessly. But there is an interesting piece of software. There's, I mean, there's a lot of software that we can spend a lot of time going through. Some of it's very interesting. Some of it's new to me. Games, of course, it comes uh, introduced. That, that's uh, quite interesting and quite new. Uh, graphics it comes with the GIMP, which is good. A lot of good distributions come with GIMP pre-installed. I can understand why a lot of distributions want to keep their ISO size down and don't bundle GIMP, but um, this one's the best part of a gig, so... Uh, so they certainly um, haven't held back too many punches on what they've included here. Comes bundled with Firefox, which is the uh, garden variety installation choice. Um, Pigeon install messenger. That's again, probably the most popular instant messaging tool, even though Ubuntu will try and push empathy on people. I think people generally prefer Pigeon. Also available on Windows, if I'm not mistaken. Transmission, good old solid uh, BitTorrent client. It's got your XChat IRC. So it's got a lot of your your software that you would install anyway and there are a few bells and whistles that you might not have heard of it comes bundled with um audacity which is something that i use a lot it's what i use to do the volume compression on a lot of my audio files and so forth but uh but i'm surprised that came bundled as well as openshot video editor and i say openshot video editor because um when it comes to video editors in linux and the open source world there's a lot of um uh, preference pref personal preferences play quite a high uh, high role in all of this. So there might be a lot of people that would like C Caden Live installed, but then again, of course, this is a GTK-based distribution, and you know you probably wouldn't want to include the KDE libraries or the necessary ones required to get Caden Live up and running. GVC View, which also is uh, something which a lot of people end up installing, even though it doesn't come bundled with a lot of distributions. So they're definitely um, sort of feeling the ground in terms of what to add on to their distribution, but there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff that's pre-installed uh, here. There's also BitTorrent Sync, which um, allows you to uh, sync up files on various devices without the, without using the cloud, which um, I haven't actually got to grips with just yet, but I certainly will be having a look at that, actually. Um, so maybe if you don't trust the cloud, or if you want to back up in case your cloud files might get removed for one reason or another, um, BitTorrent, uh, using BitTorrent to sync up your files is... Uh, that's interesting. I don't know how it works. I don't know how secure it is. Um, but rather than over-centralizing something, dispersing uh, things and decentralizing things might be just as, if not more, secure overall. But I don't know. It'd be interesting to try that out later on. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch of stuff here. But what I'm going to be doing is checking out the install process. I usually check out the install process. And the reason I do so is because it gives, again, you a good idea 
of the direction and the fl- uh, you know the direction that the um, distribution is moving. Now, this, of course, being an Ubuntu-based distribution, uh, it's going to be the ex- uh, near enough the exact same process. So, um, so I don't know how much uh, value there is in it in it inherently um, when you know I've done this pro- install process many, 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 many times, but. Um, yeah, so I, I won't download the um, updates while installing and install third-party software just to keep the time down, but uh, I do recommend you guys check those two boxes should you decide to install it yourself. So one of the good things I like about this distribution is that it is, uh, I don't, um, I'm not aware of how often they intend to update this soft, uh, this distribution. Yeah, we'll install it there. But um, whether or not they'll be doing it every two years, whether or not they'll be doing it every six months, but still basing it on the LTS uh, release or what. Uh, I do know that Linux Mint will be still maintaining, I believe, a six-month release cycle, but just changing the base of their distribution from the latest version of of Ubuntu to the latest long-term support release, as I understand it. But yeah, I definitely have a good amount of respect for distributions that uh, that settle more on the long-term support releases of Ubuntu rather than the uh, yeah uh, rather than the uh, latest and greatest software. Um, and and by and large, the reason for that is that I think if uh, if Linux is going to make it into the mainstream, if it's going to have any real shout. Of, uh, of of replacing Windows anytime in the near future, uh, it's got to have stability nailed down tight. It's got to have it tight as a drum. Um, people are not going to want to try out a new distribution only to find out that they have to uh, uh, fix it, uh, which is a real problem. Um, and especially considering that with a lot of uh, distributions, when you do have to fix them or make any serious changes or whatever, does result you in having to hit the command line and sometimes even the x.org file, which is not newbie friendly and you can actually do a fair amount of damage to your operating system when doing so and um, to minimize the amount of fixing that you have to do and certainly to minimize the amount of uh, command line um, stuff you have to do particularly if you're not interested in getting involved with the command line then um, stability really does have to be tight as a drum okay so it actually seems to be installing around pretty quickly and it doesn't have the slideshow that you often uh, that you often see is just no frills uh, copying files. That is quite interesting, actually. I wonder why they've decided to forego that. Maybe because uh, usually when they have the little slideshows to watch when they are, you know, running the install process, there, there's nothing really of any inherent value. It usually the slideshow is um, look, we can do everything Windows can do, which is a bit of a fib, but you know. Um, do you like doing documents? We can do documents too. Um, but what I don't know, what I've, I've always wanted to see on those little slideshows during the install process is maybe some video content, uh, a tutorial um, of some kind showing you how to get up and running whilst it's being installed. Um, and I'm sure there is the ability to do that. Um, could be wrong, but, uh, but yeah, just a little video tutorial, uh, little video just sort of as, as a bit of an explainer just something to watch whilst you're uh while, while you're you're installing or failing that maybe like i don't know an episode of pokemon or something <laughs> but uh yeah i mean considering that it is like those slideshows are something that people generally read because uh, nowadays with computers as fast as they are especially with solid state hard drives becoming more and more the norm um people do by and large read what's on those slideshows because your c- computer might not necessarily be, um, you know, be moving through the in- install process pretty quickly, especially if you're installing from, say, USB. Um, people might go out and make a cup of coffee or something, but by and large, they're going to be viewing at least some of the the screen estate there just to check when it's done. I mean, back in the old days when it used to take a couple of hours to install an operating system, yeah, you'd go off and you know, walk the dog or something, you know, you'd, you'd uh, go, or go and watch some TV or something while your operating system was being installed. But now it takes about 10 minutes. You kind of don't really, you know, necessarily, you know, you want to move on to the next stage as quickly as possible. And and uh, and maybe you, uh, you know, you could actually make use of that uh, that screen real estate. Maybe even have some sponsors on there. I mean, 
I know a lot of people have problems with corporatization of Linux products, but to be honest, I would really like to see developers get m more money. <laughs> I think they deserve it. I think they deserve a decent paycheck, and um, um, and and uh, you know, I wouldn't object to them uh, getting a little bit of sponsors. I know Linux meant to do that in uh, in a good number of ways, but uh, I don't know. It's eyeballs on the screen. I'm sure there might be some interest in it, but. Uh, Regardless of that, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely some potential there, which I feel not one single distribution has actually capitalized on yet. Um, so again, just look, looking at this install process, it's looking like it's going about as fast as just about any other install process. Maybe a little slower on the count that this clocks in at uh, over a gig, uh, whereas the Lubuntu distribution clocks in at about 700, 650 uh, megabytes. So... Um, so definitely Lubuntu is, uh, it strikes me as being slightly more lightweight than this, Lubuntu, uh, on the count that it comes with less less bundled software, um, so it requires less of a hard disk footprint, so um, so that might be something to take into account for netbooks, although a lot of the software that does come bundled with it is stuff that people might want to install anyway. So uh, so it's uh, it's a little bit of a moot point, I think. Um, Ubuntu, um, and well, most specifically Lubuntu, doesn't really come installed as a full suite. Um, it, it, I, as, for, as much as I love it as a distribution, you 99 times out of 100 will want to install additional uh, software through the repositories. And, uh, you know, right after install. Um, and this will probably negate a lot of that uh, unnecessary downloading um, if uh, if that's something you're looking for, especially if you're perhaps running on a, I don't know, running on a netbook or something, and you might want to, or if you've got a, a data plan or something like that, you want to minimise downloading for whatever reasons, or maybe you are on a horribly slow rural broadband connection, such as myself. Okay, so like I said, the install process identical to uh, Ubuntu and Lubuntu, and for good reason. It's a reasonably good install process. The only problem I have with it is that it doesn't raise the question in any default capacity, in any easy to uh, see capacity of of installing your home directory to a separate partition. I'd like to see that as a as a easier option rather than have to delve into a partition manager. And um, but other than that, I think it's uh, it's about as good an install process as you're ever going to get. Just as easy as Windows, if not easier. Um, and let's not forget, if you do have multiple hard disks on um, uh, on a Windows install, it's still going to ask you to fart around with partitions. So, you know, it's something that people just have to be educated on more than anything else. But like I say, um, Linux and all distributions, especially the Ubuntu-based ones, but not just the Ubuntu-based ones, are taking great strides towards user uh, user friendliness, and certainly in the last five or so years, have made huge, huge, huge strides. Um, and user friendliness isn't really a problem anymore. Installing software is easier than on Windows because it's a standardized process. Once you learn how to install one piece of software, you know how to install all the pieces of software. Um, the problem with um, Linux now, really, and I, I hesitate to use the word problem because it's a problem that I don't experience, is uh, software com uh, hardware compatibility. And um, a lot of that's down to prop prop proprietary um, uh, you know, compatibility with, with drivers and so forth. But um, even that's getting better. NVIDIA are providing better and better support, especially now that Steam's available. So kudos to them on that one um, and like I say strides are being made every single month there's there's always something in uh, omg ubuntu.co.uk which uh, which strikes up some positive news for the Linux community and it's usually pretty big news as well um, and of course Steam do claim that they are through a compatibility layer will be able to play any game uh, that's available currently now only for Windows or Mac so when they'll actually get that compatibility layer sorted, which could very well be, you know, basically Valve's answer to Wine, um, but Wine with the kind of backing that Valve can bring would be absolutely incredibly unstoppable. It'll break down all the walls, uh, which would be pretty damn awesome. But again, the vast majority of reasons why uh, Linux falls behind uh, Microsoft on the areas in which it does is not technical, it's legal. That's the real problem, and it's uh, proprietary. It's not actually dissimilar for what we we're talking about with E3 uh, and having exclusive titles. Uh, Microsoft just try and keep 
their version of exclusive titles, which might be drivers or software or whatever, and try and keep them as close to its chest as possible to try and prevent uh, operating systems like Linux from moving in, into the picture. Because, of course, Linux offers choice, and it often uh, choice often results in companies like Microsoft not making as much money as they humanly could. Nature of business, I guess. That being said, though, I do not oppose one iota that um, Linux should be a poor man's Windows. It, you know, developers on Linux have every right to make a profit off what they uh, uh, make a profit off their hard work. I mean, a lot of hard work goes into this, which is, you know, by and large, why I try and keep these reviews as positive as possible. If there's something that I, you know, don't like or something that I feel is wrong, I will point it out. But, uh, but like I say, a lot of work goes into all this. Over what, best part, what 400 Linux distributions kicking around now, and that's a lot of work and a lot of love. And uh, you know, and when people put in that kind of effort, by and large, I'm more than happy to, you know. Overlook the small things. When you start charging money for a um, piece of software or anything, I think you start upping the stakes. I think you start putting yourself out there for for a stronger degree of criticism because you're saying that your software is worth something financially. When you're giving something away for free, um, even though like when you are giving away something for free, it's not really for free because you still have to take time out of your day to learn how to use Linux software and whatever. Um, it's, um, it's, it's more... Uh, it's more of a case of you can sort of walk away at any time. You can, uh, you know, the choice is there. Basically, you're 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 offering the choice. You're offering the uh, you're given the ability to sort of get yourself educated and and find out more about about open source. So now we're what kicking onto the install process rather than the copying process. Mm mm mm. Does. Getting pretty warm, warm here in the old UK. So yeah, this proce install process definitely a little bit longer than your Ubuntu one, but then again, it's got over three hundred megabytes more software on it, so you can kind of expect that. Can we do? Ooh. It's interesting. I like uh, how they do the dock here. But I've never, I've never seen the purpose. Never seen the too much of the value of having multiple taskbars. Even when they were doing it with GNOME two, it seems to be just digging into the real estate too much. Like if you were with the old standard LX DE bar at the bottom, it takes up minimal space. It takes up uh, vertical space, uh, which is less valuable. Like with Unity, putting a taskbar on the side of the screen is one of the dumbest things they could have done. Because it, especially if you have like a smaller monitor, um, if you have a, an older machine or whatever, uh, creeping in on your, uh, you know, your horizontal resolution, it's it, it costs more. I mean, you know, you don't want to scroll sideways for websites. Websites are designed for particular resolutions, and uh, and when you start cutting into the uh, the width of them, you really start screwing up with um, things. It's not too bad if you've got like you know, a honking big screen or whatever. But if you're running it on old mach older hardware and you have uh, and you have applications, panels, whatever, coming in at the sides, it really does, uh, it really can screw up how websites are viewed. Um, and even applications as well. A lot of applications nowadays require at least, uh, I don't know, 1024 by 768 uh, resolution or higher. And there are still a lot of people that are running 10, 15 year old machines. Um, hence why, you know, Windows XP running, you know, people, why Windows XP's, you know, support being dropped is such a big issue. It, it hasn't been previously. This is, de this is the first time when Windows dropping support for an old distribution has received this kind of press attention. It's because hardware made back then, and I'm not saying hardware made today is any different, but I don't know. But hardware back then, it, it was built to last. It was built to last, outlast X, XP. But um, running, you know, upgrading to Vista, upgrading to 7, not really possible on older machines. Hence, this is where Linux comes in. And where uh, operating systems like LXLE hope to make their mark, judging from the sounds of it. Well, they've explicitly outlined it on um, 
than that thing. Okay, so as you can see, it has booted into what appears to be pretty identical to the live CD, as is the way with most distributions that come with a live CD uh, attachment. So, um, yeah, and it, it is pretty identical to the CD. Um, you can, of course, hide the uh, CPU and RAM usage. Um, you've got your connectivity, you've got your weather, you have uh, your waste management, which is quite an unusual way for, say, a recycling bin. And um, you've got your dock on the left-hand side here. Now, of course, um, as much as I despise the Unity dock for taking up uh, sort of horizontal screen resolution, this, of course, having an auto-hide feature um, basically negates that in quite a big way. Unity does have the same kind of feature, but its auto-hide function is terrible not to mention of course when you run unity across two monitors and you have to drag your mouse all the you know from your right monitor all the way to the left monitor uh to get to the the, the bar unless of course you have two what you know one on each screen and then you just take it up even more screen real estate it's uh yeah unity not 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 particularly well designed in my personal opinion maybe maybe one for tablets i don't know so like i say it comes bundled with a lot of good uh, applications, a lot of applications I'm not familiar with. Uh, good old trusty PC Man FM. Um, incredibly fast, incredibly, incredibly versatile, and um, incredibly straightforward, simple, and user-friendly to use as well. So good for that. Uh, I do like the, uh, the directory structure in the menu. Uh, obviously would make more use if I had, you know, some kind of... Uh, uh, files, maybe. But, uh, yeah. And then, of course, yeah, you've got Minitube, so you can check out YouTube uh, through that as well. Yeah. So, let's, before we uh, before we head out and sum up, let's have a look at some of the additional repositories. Is that going to be in System Tools? Uh, do, 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 do. PPA Manager. There we go. That was what I was looking for. Okay. Okay, so there we go, and we can uh, search all Launchpad PPAs. That's pretty cool. Um, you've got settings, you've got advanced. Let's look at managing PPAs. So it's currently getting information about our current PPAs, and here we go. I have cracked open a couple of windows there. That is probably my unnecessary double-clicking. Okay. So what we've got here, a lot of these, again, I don't recognize right off the bat just off their PPA address. But there was one that I did mention when I did a run-through, and that was... Well, there's VideoLAN. Of course, we're all familiar with the VideoLAN um, media player. Stable Daily. So that certainly gives you the latest uh, video land stuff. Um, LibreOffice PPA as well. So the idea from what I've gathered from LXLE as a distribution is that you start off with the fundamental foundation of um, a long-term support Ubuntu release. Uh, and you, yeah, it's pretty stable, um, especially considering that it, it being updated every two years means that you, when you solve a problem, when you solve a bug, that gives you a longer window to stop that bug from, say, reoccurring in the next distribution. It also, um, if that does fail to happen, it means that at most you only ever have to fix that bug in two years' time. Uh, whereas, of course, uh, I've ran, uh, you know, I've done the uh, the six-month uh, distro cycle um, back when I had the time. And you would have recurring bugs. If you had a particularly quirky bit of hardware and every time you um, installed a new distribution or upgraded, this bug would constantly resurface and maybe in a couple of years it might get taken care of, but it doesn't stop it from being a little bit annoying, especially if there are more than one of those little quirks or bugs on that particular system. And, the system, and, and, and it might not necessarily even be the problem of the distribution. It might be just a quirk of the proprietary elements of the uh, drivers required, but... Um, it doesn't make it any less annoying. So the long-term support release has that solid foundation. That's good. But then again, it also brings to the table the latest version of LibreOffice, latest version of VLC, and I'm sure that these other PPAs essentially do the same thing, but for other bits of uh, software bundled with this distribution, um, which also incidentally might go some way to explain as to why there's so much bundled software with this particular distribution. It's because they want to show you uh, and they want to put front and center 
their latest and greatest software while still retaining, of course, the stability of a good old long-term support release. So definitely a worthwhile endeavor, this distribution as well. I like the additional PPAs. I like the research gone into uh, the software and they clearly have put a lot of thought into the software that comes bundled with this. Um, you could argue that it is effectively the Linux Mint for uh, Lubuntu. So whereas Linux Mint is to Ubuntu what LXLE is to Lubuntu, uh, then you know you could kind of make that argument, of course. What I really would be looking at and what I would be looking forward to seeing out of this distribution, and it has ranked quite highly on distrowatch.com as uh, already off the bat, so it's certainly being quite well received uh, by the Linux community. But I would like, to, this is a long-term endeavor, and I would like to see the enthusiasm for LXLE maintained so that you can get a good number of these long-term releases out. So I'm not familiar whether or not they're going to be uploading uh, or whether or not they're going to be bringing out uh, releases shorter, you know, whether or not they're going to be bringing out six monthly uh, releases um, that just use the long-term support foundation or whether or not they'll be uh, just bringing out a new version of this distribution every uh, two years or so. be interesting to find out how they go about that. Um, but yeah, a lot of potential here um, and a lot of uh, certainly feels a particular gap in the market now. Um, it used to consider itself the long-term support version of Lubuntu, but since Lubuntu now has a long-term support release, um, it sort of considers itself the luxury, bigger and bolder version of Lubuntu. And if that's what you're looking for, that's what you get with this distribution. So that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. There will, of course, be the link to this distribution down in the description should you require it. If you tried it out, please let me know in the comments section below. If there's a distribution you would like me to have a look at as well, please let me know in the comments section below. I will be taking a look at the latest Fedora build as well at the request of Panic at the Apollo, who is a regular commenter there down in the comments section below. And I will be making the effort to move away from Debian-based distributions uh, occasionally, just so that I can see what you know, the rest of the open source community has to offer as well. But this is a particularly big time for Ubuntu-based distributions because, of course, the new Ubuntu release. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very, very, very much for watching. Um, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.